So exactly what issues will voters in Albuquerque have a say in come November? Well, the city council is set to help decide that today. Councilors plan to bundle three issues together, giving the council power to approve and fire police and fire chiefs, change special elections and geo bond money. These are all things Mayor RJ Berry says he's in favor of. And the council plans to take separate votes on reducing pot penalties and increasing the sales tax an eighth of a percent to help the mentally ill. Two ideas the mayor says he does not like. Now remember last week, Mayor RJ Mary Barry vetoed a bundle with all the issues lumped together. Now, even if the council and the mayor approve some of these plans, they may not actually make it on the ballot because there may not be enough room. Bernalillo County Commissioners are set to talk about that tomorrow. We'll, of course, keep you updated. Well, there is a controversial piece of land in the heart of Albuquerque that the city desperately wants to set aside for Balloon Fiesta. But not everyone is happy with how the project is coming along. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's just, it makes no sense. All right, on special assignment, we showed you how Albuquerque is building a park on the 22 acre of land at Osuna and Vista del Norte. Walmart wanted to build the Supercenter there, but in 2006, it was met with fierce protests. There was a nasty battle between neighbors and Walmart proponents. Then City Councilor Debbie O'Malley led the charge to help secure city money to buy the 22 acres at a cost of six and a half million dollars. Crews are now installing grass on just six acres of land. The project started in January. Now the park will be used as soccer fields and for balloon pilots who say they need the space to land. But one neighbor we spoke with doesn't understand how it could be taking so long to install grass. We could have put up three Walmarts and a skyscraper in the time it's taken it to put grass on a sprinkler system. So you, you get one or the other. We could do it much faster and it cost a lot more, or we could take some time and still meet our October deadline. All right, well, the six acres are expected to be complete by Balloon Fiesta the first weekend in October. To see Kim's entire special assignment story, watch Two Costs of Fox or go online at krqe.com. And there is a new two and a half million dollar building due to be erected at the Balloon Fiesta Park. These are the renderings for what will eventually be the Sid Cutter Pilots Pavilion. It will be replace the big white pilots tent at Balloon Fiesta, but don't expect to see it anytime soon. It will take a full year for construction and it probably won't be open until next year's Balloon Fiesta. The new facility will have real bathrooms, not porta potties, but don't expect to use them during Balloon Fiesta. For September and October, the AIBF has an agreement with the city that they have exclusive use of the park. So they manage the park and the event during that time. All right, so people will be able to use the building, including the bathrooms, for other events like Freedom Fourth or youth sporting events. Construction for this new building will go out to a bid in just a few months. Happening now, 534, a teen is behind bars this morning, charged with murder. And we should learn more about this today, but what we do know right now is police arrested this young man, Daryl Martinez, just 19 years old, and accused him of shooting and killing James Lucero last week. It happened in an apartment complex off Harper Drive near I-25 in an Antibo Lodge. It's in the northeast part of Albuquerque. Investigators have not released a motive, but they say the young Martinez will be charged with murder. A well, sheriff here in New Mexico who is already facing federal charges accused of roughing up a driver is in even more trouble this morning. Federal prosecutors say two months before the incident that led to those charges, Rio Reba County Sheriff Tommy Rodella targeted a 52 year old woman. Court documents say Rodella tailgated Yvette Maez at night without his emergency lights on. When he did turn the lights on, Maez pulled over. Court papers show Rodella demanded to know why she didn't stop sooner. Maez says when she questioned Rodella about why he didn't just pass her, he threatened to lock her up. Rodella's lawyer is not commenting, saying he has not reviewed the new court documents. Uh, well, a horse jockey is arrested before a big event in Rui Doso after he's accused of using an electric shock device to cheat. The New Mexico State Racing Commission says Raul Valenzuela was suspended for in August for having an electric shock device. He won an appeal allowing him to race Monday, but moments before he was supposed to get on his horse, he was arrested for what happened back in August. In our opinion, affect the outcome and the, the, uh, the way the horse is either handled, it either retards the speed of, speed of the horse or increase it, but it's something that shouldn't be used on a horse, period. 
In addition to facing criminal charges, Valenzuela could also lose his jockey's license. A man facing murder charges for allegedly stabbing another man to death on Labor Day is still in jail this morning. According to a criminal complaint, Michael Fox was giving several people a ride home. Police say he became agitated when a baby that was in the vehicle started crying. Cops say Fox pulled over so the parents could grab a baby bottle from the trunk. But they say that's when Fox just drove off with their child still inside the vehicle. The criminal complaint states that Fox agreed to meet the parents of the baby at a Circle K near Wyoming and Constitution. It is there that police say the child's father, Kenneth Boyd, got into a fight with Fox. They say Fox stabbed Boyd in the chest. Here's the suspect appearing before a judge after being arrested. Based on the nature of the allegations I have read over the criminal complaint, based on the charges as well, I am going to set the bond at $1 million. I'm going to make it cash. We've learned this isn't the first time Fox has been in trouble with the law. Court records show that he has a lengthy criminal history. The student who admitted to threatening one of the victims of the Roswell School shooting will be moved to another school. In January, Mason Campbell shot fellow students Nathaniel Tavares and Kendall Sanders. Well, on Thursday, Berendo Middle School officials learned of a threat against Nathaniel. Chavez County Sheriff deputies say an eighth grade student admitted to writing on a bathroom wall that he would, quote, finish off Nathaniel. The district tells us that student will be moved to a different school within the district.